Hell Yes Life, episode 31. Welcome to the Hell Yes Life podcast, the show that helps you come alive so you can live a Hell Yes Life. I'm your host, Norman Bell. Hey there, welcome to another episode of the Hell Yes Life podcast. I am your host, Norman Bell, and hell yes, I am glad that you are here today. This is the place to hear inspiring stories and actionable tips from our amazing guests that will motivate you to live your Hell Yes Life. The Hell Yes Life podcast releases new episodes every Tuesday and sporadically on Thursdays and Fridays. And Hell Yes Lifers, if you want to write a review of the Hell Yes Life podcast, please visit hellyeslife.com forward slash H-Y-L iTunes. That's forward slash H-Y-L iTunes. Also, if you've been listening to Hell Yes Life podcast and you're getting inspired by our guests and you're starting to think to yourself, hey, I want to live my Hell Yes Life, but I don't know how to go about doing it. Well, then I have good news for you. Right now on HellYesLife.com, you can sign up for a free five-part video mini course that will walk you through the five steps to a Hell Yes Life. The course will help you find your Hell Yes, create your cringeworthy vision, build your Hell Yes day, and plan your first Hell Yes action, and much more. If you're ready to jumpstart your Hell Yes Life, then head over to HellYesLife.com right now. Okay, Let's get into today's episode. Hell yes, lifers. Today, my guest is Stephen Aitchison. Stephen is a speaker, coach, writer, author, entrepreneur, and Facebook expert. Stephen has amassed an online following of over 3.5 million followers. Originally starting his business in personal development, his success in social media, blogging, coaching, and growing an online business has made him a highly sought-after expert in these areas, and this led him to create Your Digital Formula, a program for entrepreneurs to grow their online presence and grow their business. Stephen's network of heart-centered entrepreneurs reaches over 100 million people a day, with their unique messages while also helping entrepreneurs grow their audience and uh, their individual business. Now, on the show, Hell Yes Lifers, we discussed how Stephen got started in the online personal development space, how a certain book falling on his head changed the course of Stephen's life, how he started on Facebook and went on to grow his audience to over 3.5 million followers. I'm sure everyone will want to know that. How one of his posts went viral in 2014 and now has been seen by 2% of the population of the planet. We also discussed the three questions you should ask yourself when creating Facebook content, why engagement rate is the key and often overlooked statistic to follow on Facebook, and why you should make sure your Facebook posts include the three E's. One final note before we dive into the interview. Stephen has graciously extended an offer to you, Hell Yes Lifers. After listening to the interview, if you're interested in Stephen's Your Digital Formula program, visit the Hell Yes Life episode page and you'll find a link you can use to get $300 off the cost of the program when you use the coupon code Hell Yes at checkout. Okay, let's dive into this interview. Stephen Aitchison, welcome to the Hell Yes Life podcast. Are you ready to tell us about your Hell Yes Life? Hell yes, I am, Norman. All right, Stephen. Thanks so much for joining me today. Um, I always like to start off by asking our guest, what is your Hell Yes? And by that, I mean, what is your passion, that thing that really lights you up and makes you come alive? You know, the biggest thing, Norman, my Hell Yes would be to help others to empower other people. So really, um, when I first kind of got started in the business online, it was really all about making money. I was trying to make as much money as possible. But then kind of flipped it around and thought that the best part, and it was a realization, the best part of all of this was helping other people and empowering other people to build a business or kind of do personal development stuff as well. And that's what really gets me going, just knowing that I've got that kind of ripple effect around the world. I know that sounds a bit, kind of grandiose around the world, but literally it's what it is if we really kind of think about it. And that that definitely is my hell yes. And I get up early in the mornings for that every single morning. 
That's great, Stephen. Yeah, I, I had um, a guest on a few episodes ago, John Lee Dumas, who has a, a great a- entrepreneurs podcast, and he actually said the same thing the, about the ripple effect that he really loves that that idea of um, you know you know actually like a few degrees out, right? Like you know you you affect somebody. Yeah, exactly. Um, so that's that's great. Um, can you remember the like the first time, uh, or you know, one of the first times that you realized that that was your hell yeah? So it sounded like you first got into um, online entrepreneurship to to make money, but then you had a shift. Do you remember when that happened? Yeah, it was back in two thousand twelve, and I'd been trying for about six years various things. You know, kind of affiliate marketing, kind of email marketing, blog marketing, content marketing on a smaller scale. And I was really kind of trying it all out and thinking, how do I get more money? How do how do I really get more money so I can give up my full-time job? And I'd kind of got into a partnership, um, a business partnership where I was making um, guided meditations. I was into personal development at the time and I still am to a degree just now. And we I kind of got this partnership together and it allowed me to give up my full-time job, which I'd been trying for six years. And then I kind of had the realisation when I was making and recording and editing these guided meditations, I thought, okay, what do the actual um, kind of email subscribers want? What do the, the people actually want or potential buyers want? And it's just about asking them, what kind of guided, guided meditations do you want? And that is when the shift happened. And I thought, okay, don't ask yourself the question, how much money can I make? But ask yourself the question, how many more people can you help? Because if somebody comes back and says, okay, I'd love this guided med- this type of guided meditation, you can be pretty rest assured that more people want that type of kind of meditation. That's only an example. And that has stuck with me from 2012 onwards. So it's all about asking yourself the question every day, I think, how many more people can you help and what do they want? And um, what questions are they looking to be answered? I mean, you can do that. I think that's a massive shift in your business. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I've experienced that myself, you know, that kind of going back and forth between that those mindsets of, okay, what 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 can make the most money? How am I going to monetize this? Blah, blah, blah. blah. And that I, I think of, uh, there's a term out there, the hungry ghost. I think of it it's sort of like a, that's hungry ghost mentality. Like, oh, I need, I need more and more and more. And you're just trying to feed your own ego or your own, you know, just trying to build yourself up versus that, uh, that shift into what you're talking about there, where you're really focused on like, well, wait a second, there's, you know, this is for other people. What do they actually want? So why don't you tell me, so what, what did you, actually do? Did you actually just um, reach out to your audience and say, hey, what do you what do you want for these guided meditations? And and how did you connect with them? Yeah, well, the first time it happened, um, really kind of, this is, as 2012, I gave up the full-time job. That was with the guided meditation. But before then, two years before, this is when I realized the power of it. I had a kind of built up a big blog. It was one of the biggest blogs in the UK or personal development blogs in the UK and built up a, a sizable email list as well. And I was writing all these kind of ebooks and kind of making products. And I had the thought to ask the email list what type of ebook they would like me to write. So I had a list of nine ebooks and I was in Turkey at the time on holiday with my kind of wife and two kids. And so I used to get up early in the mornings, half past four or something and kind of start my work before they got up. So I had this list of nine and then I thought, do you know what? Everybody keeps on asking me, how do I manage to get up so early and still get shit done, basically, and still not feel tired and still have all that energy, drive and enthusiasm? And I thought, why don't I write a book on that? Um, And I I kind of put that in the list to send to the email. So I put that in as number 10 and said, okay, here's the e-books I'm thinking about writing. What one would you like me to write about? So I sent it to the list and about 61% of them said, I'd like to know how to become an early riser. Mm. And so I wrote the ebook. I wrote the ebook in kind of space of 30 days because it really surprised me. And I, I really knew about the topic. I love um, the kind of topic of it and the psychology of kind of sleep and stuff like that as well. And people just say, you need eight hours of sleep, but you don't really. I don't believe you do. Um, I can get by in five hours sleep with a nap for 15 minutes in the afternoon. And it's brilliant. Um, so I kind of wrote about that, the psychology of it, the biology of it, and I kind of put it for sale. And that ebook went on to make about $20,000. And I'm going, holy shit. And that's the first time I kind of realized the power, one, of asking what your subscribers want, 
and two, the power of serving other people as well. Excellent. Excellent. I actually want to back up just a little bit and, um, and ask, how did you decide to get into personal development versus, uh, you know, uh, any other avenues of online entrepreneurship? Well, it was really um, a kind of number of things. Um, it really started when I was about 19, 20 years old. I was going through kind of a rough time as you do as an adolescent. You kind of, you're grown up, you're still trying to find yourself. And I was in this bookshop in Kirkcaldy in Fife, which is in Scotland, and I kind of reached up for a book and kind of pulled it out. But as I was kind of pulling the book out, another book fell from the top shelf, kind of hit me on the head, hit the ground. And I kind of looked around quickly to see if anybody had seen me because I was really embarrassed about this book hitting me on the head. And um, I, I went to pick it up to put it back on the shelf. But it was this kind of garish red and yellow kind of book cover. And I looked at it and it was a copy of Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. And so yeah, I thought, classic. yeah, oh, it was amazing. But that was the first time I'd kind of come across it. And I thought, do you know what? This is a sign. I'm just going to buy it. It was £2.50 or something at the time for the second-hand copy. And I bought it and I read it on the bus kind of ride home or I kind of got into on the bus ride home. And I thought, this is brilliant. So I started putting that into practice. And I started to see some changes with the visualization techniques and kind of the mastermind, the mind mastermind to the people you'd love to have around the table. And I thought, these techniques are just amazing. And I kept on using them. And then I went, uh, went to do my psychology degree. And once I finished the psychology degree and got the degree, I thought, okay, what am I going to do um, entrepreneurial kind of wise? And I thought, why not start a blog? Just kind of writing about how I've kind of changed my life and um, various things that I've done. So I started a blog and it took off. And that's how I got into personal development and making or writing kind of personal development books and making products for personal development. And it really all started kind of back in 2006 when I first started the blog. But it was that book that started me on the journey. That is great. I, and uh, Stephen, if they ever make a movie of your life, I was just picturing that scene of you in the bookstore. You're pulling out the, another book and then that one hits you on the head, literally. And it's Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. How that's that's perfect. Um it was brilliant. Um, and hell yes, lifers out there listening, if you have uh, not heard of or read Think and Go Rich, you you have to check it out. It's one of the uh, all time classics of, of personal development. So just as uh, you know, kind of continue on that journey. Um, what? Uh, so you said you started writing a blog, and then it just took off. So take us, you know, a lot of people write a blog, and it doesn't take off. So what what was it? Like, how did how what was that journey like for you? Did you um, did it immediately? Uh, res- you know, were people immediately responding to it? Or uh, did it take a while? No, no, it took a while. I started in 2006. And to be honest, um, Norman, I didn't really know kind of what to write about. I thought, I want to, I love writing because I've been writing um, short stories and stuff um, since I was a child. And I just kind of love the idea of writing. I, I think one of the first articles I put on, it still kind of ranks in Google as well, is how to stop farting. Is how to reduce <laughs> farting. I thought, and look, looking back on it, I think, why the hell did I write about that? It's just because I didn't know what to write about. <laughs> and uh, I had all these well, topics. Start somewhere, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, so I kind of started writing and then I got kind of more into it and really got into the kind of blog writing and kind of how do you do headlines? How do you do sub- subheadlines? How do you get kind of people to read a blog post and kind of comment on it as well? So it took about, I'd say about a year and a half, two years before it really started to go anywhere. And I was kind of in a blog network um, with the likes of um, Leo Babauta, um, who had a big blog at the time as well. So we were in a kind of blog network and we kind of got a blog post shared and um, stuff that way. And the email list was growing as well at the time, but I didn't do anything with it because I thought, I didn't even realise about kind of email marketing, what you should do with it at the time. I wished I did at the time, go, thinking back on it, but I didn't. So I'd kind of grown the blog and it was getting really big. People were commenting all the time and it was it was really, really good. And the email list um, subscribers um, was really grown um, as well, but did take about two years. But I just loved doing it. I didn't really care about it kind of growing. It just took off um, just because I loved what I was doing. 
Right, right. And so had you like from the outset, I'm kind of asking this for myself as well, because I started this podcast back in January. And I just I, I set this goal for myself. I said, okay, we're, we're going to the end of the year at least. And then I'll, I'll get a chance to decide at that point if I want to continue with it. But I won't I won't have the chance to make that decision before then um, I'm committing to a year. Did you have any kind of commitment like that coming out of the gate? Or were, were you just kind of like, well, let's just see how it goes from week to week? I was literally, it was just seeing, well, not from week to week, because I thought, okay, I'm going to start a blog. And I checked out a few blogs that I really admired. And the big one at the time was Steve Pavlina. He had a blog out and I thought he is just kind of brilliant information. It was long kind of posts as well. Nobody else was really doing long posts at the time. Um, so I just kind of emulated or tried to emulate um, what he was doing and really started with, okay, what do, what do people want to know and how do they want to read it? So they want to know something quick. In this kind of day and age, people have only got kind of two, three minute attention span. Um, back then it was a wee bit longer. So I kind of wrote posts like list posts, uh, which done really, really well. So I just kept on doing what was working. So you see what's working and um, figure out what the your readers are looking for and figure out the information they're looking for and just kind of write um, about that. But it was kind of just, the plan was just to keep on writing because I loved it until I stopped loving it. And that didn't really happen, to be honest. <laughs> I just kept on going. So I That's still great. still kept on loving it. Yeah, yeah. And that's the difference between doing something for where the, the kind of that inner motivation, you know, when it really lights you up and makes you come alive, you know, whether it's uh, five people uh, reading it or five million people, you've still got that inner drive to to, uh, to go forward versus something that you're where you've just got that kind of head, uh, that mind frame of I'm trying to make money at this, but I'm not really that interested in this topic. I just think it's something that will make money. Yeah, definitely. If you go, if you go in with that mindset, where you're just trying to make money and you pick a you pick a niche because you think it's a sexy niche and you think it's going to make you money, you're not going to last very long um, because you've got to have that passion. And I've realized that um, kind of over the years in business as well, without that passion, you kind of, it just dies. You just, even if you're making money, uh, it just goes, oh, this is not really what I want to do. And then you have to try and figure out what you want to do. Uh, and I've been fortunate enough along the road to kind of figure out a lot of um, things about my passions, what really drives me. And if you can figure that out, then you're kind of halfway there already. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, there's a couple of things I want to mention at this point. Uh, one is that I, I have a Scottish connection as well. Are you in Glasgow? Is that right? Yeah, just outside Glasgow. Oh yeah, my father. Uh, my father passed away a couple of years ago, but he was from just outside of Glasgow as well, from Giffnock. Do you know? Oh, Giffnock. Yeah, it's just up the road from where I stay. Oh, that's great. <laughs> nobody knows. Nobody outside of Scotland knows Giffnock. Uh, so, uh, so we'll have to compare notes about that. I was a Clan Macmillan. That was yeah. my plan. I did a little um, research project back in middle school. Um, so nice to talk to a, a, a Scot. I'm half Scottish. Um, and then the other thing is, you know, we just have to get around to this topic. So I, I wanted to get some of those early day stuff. And uh, I want to hear a little bit more about that journey from from where we've left off up until present day. And it just has to be mentioned, you have a Facebook page that I have the, that I took this screenshot of the number from yesterday, you have 3,502,389 likes. And now how did you do that? Okay, so <laughs> so br bring us up to date here. You know, it sounds like you've been blogging and that's been going well, but then how did you transition to social media and, and particularly with Facebook, how did you uh, build that kind of an audience? Well, I was thinking about when I was doing a blog and I thought, okay, I, I didn't, um, I still love doing a blog and I still kind of love writing, but I was getting kind of guest writers on. Um, a lot, and then I built up the email list, and I was really starting to make some money with the email list um, as well. Not a lot, not enough to give up, but I was still uh, making some good money. Um, so I thought, okay, what what is next for the business? What's the next level? And I was kind of looking at social media, and I thought, nah, I don't know if I should should be on it or not. But in 2013, I thought, okay, I've mastered blogging, I've mastered email, kind of list building. I, I, I want something. I want a new challenge. And I looked at Facebook and I thought, um, this is still going to be around in five, 10 years time. Why not kind of go for Facebook, make that the kind of social media platform to build up? So beginning of end of 2013, 2014, beginning of 2014, I thought, right, this is it. This is the journey I'm going to start. Um, I'd like to get maybe 200,000 followers by the end of 2014. 
And so I kind of looked at Facebook, what other people were doing, reverse engineered what they were doing, seeing what people were responding to. I just kind of looked at my news feed. It was just as simple as that. Um, and kind of looking at other pages and seeing what people were responding to. And I thought, I can do that. I could write my own quotes. I could make images and put quotes on them or make videos, um, but try and make it better than what other people were doing. And by the end of 2014, I think we had about 600,000 followers. And it's just been doing more of the same. Figure out what your audience wants, give it to them, talk to them, interact with them, i.e. via comments, via kind of Facebook live shows and stuff like that, um, and just be there. And that's how it's grown to three and a half million followers. Um, so it's been, it's been it's been quite a journey from there. That is amazing, amazing um, results there, and obviously, what your 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 message is resonating with a, a large audience. Um, but let's take it back, because you know, obviously, you know, to get from six hundred thousand to three point five million, I can almost see that journey um, a little easier than from zero to six hundred thousand. So, I mean, you you were already coming into Facebook with a, a large email list and a large audience for your blog. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. So, what did really what was doing with Facebook? I had a Facebook presence in two thousand twelve or two thousand eleven, two thousand twelve. So, all I was doing is I'd linked up the RSS feed from the blog and linked it to Facebook. So every time I posted a blog post, it would just go to Facebook. So I didn't start off with zero on Facebook. I started off with 30,000 um, followers, which was relatively easy to get back then, to be honest, Norman. It was really quite easy to get um, Facebook followers back then. Um, so I started off with 30,000 and just I would kind of tell people um, I'm now on Facebook um, via email list. I did a Sunday newsletter and kind of reminded them um, that was on Facebook, and it just started growing and growing and growing, and then a lot of the posts went viral. And by viral, I mean um, there was a post back in 2014 that has now been seen by 2% of the world's population. So oh it has been, it reached, I think it was 160 million people, um, and I thought, this is crazy. And then I thought, well, we could use this for business as well. So I put a link above that post when it started to go viral. And from that one post on Facebook, which you probably couldn't do now, but from that one post on Facebook, it got about 10,000 extra subscribers as well. Oh, my goodness. Okay, well, for our listeners out there that have not seen that post, including myself, I'm not, I'm not going to leave them hanging. What was in that post that 2% of the population of the planet has seen? That post was simply, it was a kind of a sepia image with a little girl carrying a teddy bear and it's a, it's a simple quote. I don't, um, sometimes you can't figure out why it goes viral. So the quote is, I'm guilty of giving people more chances than they deserve. But when I'm done, I'm done. And that's it. And that's it. And that's, and it, and that's what went viral. Yeah. And that, and the, and the picture is of a little girl with a teddy bear. Yeah. On a, a sepia yeah. background is a long kind of winding road, a little girl with a teddy bear. And it's got that kind of quote on it. That and is. That is funny. Yeah, it's just, uh, and you couldn't have predicted that, right? It's just, uh, you just put it out there with uh, one of many of these sorts of images or whatever you put out. Yeah. yeah. So I'm just looking at it just now. So, so it's been shared 1.7 uh, million times. That's how many times it's been shared. And I put wow. loads of different links. I've just changed the links um, over the last couple of years. Um, so yeah, it's, it's still going strong just now. And is that, uh, did you write that or is that a quote that you found somewhere? That was a quote um, I wrote or adapted from something else because what I was doing at the time, I was looking at quotes um, from goodreads.com and just thought, okay, I can write more yep. quotes. Um, and just looking at quotes on Goodreads and I kind of written that one down as well. So it was kind of adapted from somewhere else, which is kind of what a lot of people do um, as well, to be honest. But that quote was adapted, yeah. So, um, and I understand that you have a whole program around this. And so, and we'll talk about that towards the end. If people want more information, they want to go more in depth with you, but can you give us a little, so uh, high level sort of tips, let's say, you know, myself included, uh, you know, I'm trying to build my Facebook page. Others, I'm sure there's plenty of listeners out there that are, you know, at, at different stages with their uh, Facebook pages. Um, what, so what is it that you found works? It sounds like some like quotes, uh, image, you know, 
quotes and images. What what else? Yeah, quotes and images definitely work, and they work. They've been working for the last couple of years. However, um, they're not getting as much reach as they used to do because everybody, Facebook in particular, if you think about what Facebook's goals are, Facebook goal is or one of the goals is to overtake YouTube with being the number one kind of video um, on a video place to be on the net. So they want to overtake YouTube. So they're huge on videos just now. So now what you can do is you can make image quotes, but put them into a video. Just very simple, same image quote that you've used in the past and put some music behind it and put 30 seconds and put it on a video. Um, and you can make that go viral. But you have to really know kind of what, what's going to touch your readers. You have to ask yourself, okay, what's going to touch the hearts of my readers? So when we say talk about touching the heart, that's kind of um, touchy-feely kind of stuff. But you have to look at your audience as well. So my audience is comprised of 78% women. That's who kind of like my page. Um, so I kind of cater to women between the ages of, say, 21 and 54. And the touchy-feely stuff does really, really well. So once you know what people are responding to or your audience is responding to, Give them more of what they're responding to. And you do that yeah. with kind of videos as well, or a Facebook Live, or a quote, or a kind of status update, or something like that. But make sure you're incorporating the three E's. That it has to be educational, entertaining, or enlightening in some way, or all three. It could be a mixture of all three. So if your post touch the heart of somebody, and it's a mixture of the three E's, then you're, you're really onto something. But the, the thing with it is, if you're building up the Facebook page, you have to be prepared to let it go and not check your stats every single day and not look at, okay, this is not working. Why is that not working? Just keep doing your thing. Keep checking your audience what they want. Keep doing it. And eventually, the people that continue and are consistent, they will start to build the page up because it is harder today than it was a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, a couple of things just to, to um, uh, highlight what you just said, the three E's, educational, entertaining, and enlightening. So uh, keep keep that in mind, Helios Lifers, if you're creating Facebook posts, um, that's that's great insight. And uh, yeah, I, I, what you were just saying there, again, I can identify with both mind mindsets of like constantly checking stats. I, you know, for, for the podcast, we have, I have Libsyn and I was like, oh, I could, I have some days where I'm in there obsessively like uh, a dozen times a day checking and those days are not ever, you know, very enjoyable. And then there's other days where you just busy yourself with what you're doing. And, uh, and then, oh, by the way, at the end of the day, you realize, oh, hey, I got a, over a hundred, you know, whatever the number is of, of people that are listening. So it, it usually tends to, it's like the watch pot never boils sort of thing. Yeah. So, okay. So, um, take us up to, tell us a little bit about, okay. One, one of the things I was reading was, um, you were talking about engagement rate and that this is of a, um, a metric that almost everyone ignores. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, well, what people do, they tend to look at the number of likes that they're getting, but it's not really about the number of likes because you could, well, you could in the past, you can nowadays, you could in the past, you could buy a million likes for your page if you want to do it, and they'd be useless. They'd be absolutely useless. They wouldn't engage with you. And really, you have to look at the engagement rate, and the way you figure that out is you go to the number of likes on your page, and when you click on likes on your page, it's got a figure called people talking about this. Now, what you do is you grab that figure for people talking about this, divide it by the number of page likes you've got, and times that by 100, and you get a percentage score. So, for example, on my page just now, there's 736,000 people talking about it, and there's three and a half million likes. So if we kind of do the calculations, it's roughly about 20% engagement rate, which is low for me, to be honest. So it's about 20% engagement rate. That means 20% of the people are kind of who like your page are engaging with it in some way in that particular week. So mm -hmm. that's a figure you really want to focus on. You want to focus on the number of people talking about this and your engagement rate overall. Now, this goes up and down and people can obsess with this as well. Right now, mine's has is, is kind of gone down the tubes just now, but Facebook have that cycle where it does go down the tubes. For two months last year, it went down the tubes as well. You just don't bother. You keep on going, do what you're doing because you know what works and eventually it comes back up. Um, a lot of people have experienced this and just given up. But if you keep going, 
it just it keeps rising, keeps rising, keeps rising. And it's all good, but focus on your engagement rate. Focus what the people are talking about and engage with your kind of audience as well. That is great advice. I think very insightful for a lot of people. And I, Stephen, I, I, you know, I have to say my condolences that only seven hundred and thirty-six thousand people <laughs> are talking about your posts. <laughs> sure, people would, some people would be very happy with about that amount. But, uh, but I get it. But you know, it's it's all relative, right? Yeah, so exactly, you've obviously yeah. had a, a higher engagement rate, and now it's come down. And yeah, so, um, and I wonder, is twenty percent like? Uh, uh, it sounds like that's low for you. It, what is a typical engagement rate? Now, nowadays, typical engagement rate is roughly between 1% and 2%. Oh, okay. okay. Wow. Which so sounds you're... terrible, yeah. to be honest. It sounds really bad and say, why would I ever try and grow a Facebook page? But you can. You just need to stand above the market, what everybody else is doing. Do something a little bit different and try new things as well. Um, but always keep your audience in mind. What do they want? What do they want to see? Um, but yeah. typically, yes, yeah, 1% to 2%, which is not a good start, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how So you were talking about how Facebook has changed over the years. You mentioned a couple of times like, oh, yeah, you used to be able to do this and quickly get this many followers. Not anymore. What What's different now? I, I mean, obviously, things are kind of set more saturated, um, but how are things different? Yeah, it's definitely getting more saturated as well. But it's the algorithms. Facebook are obviously, they're, they're a business and they're looking to make money. And we, I think we've got to understand that mentality as well, because a lot of people that have got Facebook pages say, oh, that's rubbish of Facebook. They're not, the algorithms and my reach is really low. My engagement rate is really low. I can't get any more likes like I used to. But it's their page. You don't own the Facebook page. You're just kind of on their platform using it. So you have to work around every time Facebook make an algorithm change and they do it quite regularly. Then you have to work around that and say, okay, what do Facebook really want? And if you ask the question, what do Facebook want? What do your readers want? What do you want? And if you can figure out what do Facebook want, they want more people to stay on their site. So at the moment, um, the average is about 22 minutes. The last quarter results, people that kind of go onto Facebook, they stay on for about 22 minutes on average. So they want that figure higher. So you now know what Facebook want. What do the readers want? They want kind of, well, a couple of regards to my page, want kind of touchy-feely stuff, good videos that are entertaining, enlightening, or educational in some way. What do you want? You want to grow your email subscriber list. You want to kind of promote some of your products, and you want your kind of subscriber numbers to be higher as well, or your follower numbers to be higher as well. So now you know all three, you start to work around the Facebook algorithms and see, okay, what are your audience responding to and try and give them more, and just ignore the rest of it just now once and make an algorithm change because your reach is really extremely low and um, when you post something you, it might only reach 0.5 percent of the number of people on your page and um, which is a depressing yeah, yeah. statistic as well but they obviously want you to advertise as well and if you advertise even a couple yeah. of dollars a day then that reach is going to go higher and that is that is the case with facebook just now so wait, if you advertise with Facebook, your um, organic reach will actually go up. They're, they're like going like, oh, he's spending money. Let's let's boost his organic reach. Is that what's going on? <laughs> well, that is officially no. <laughs> officially no, that's not what's happening. But when you do kind of advertising, your organic reach starts to go up um, yeah. as well. Because yeah. what, what yeah. happens with Facebook, if somebody's interacted with a post, whether it be um, an advertised post or not, the subsequent post after that, then that's going to go higher up in the newsfeed of the readers who previously engaged with you. Um, so you don't have to advertise a subsequent post, but it will just go naturally higher up in the newsfeed of the readers who engaged with you before. I thought, does that make sense? Yeah. 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 Definitely. Definitely. So yeah, your organic reach goes up once you start kind of spending a few dollars, but a lot of people just don't want to do that. But in business, you've got to spend money to kind of accumulate money. Right, right. Well, you, you know, um, Stephen, you've given us a ton of uh, value here in the episode, but obviously, there's, you know, probably people out there that would want to dive more into this topic. And I know you have this program, your digital formula. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, basically what it's teaching, we're kind of changing um, tack just now, because what I was teaching at the very beginning, because um, everybody was asking me, how am I going to grow my page? And I was just giving everybody a free PDF 
that I'd written, just say, here, go away and do it. And then I thought, shit, there's a business idea here. So I kind of started this program that's grown and grown. It was originally about how to grow your Facebook page, but it's not just about that. It's about you being an influencer. Because just now, Norman, you're an influencer. Whether you realize, obviously, you'll kind of start to realize that or you've realized that already. But it doesn't matter if you're an influencer, you've got to have a platform as well. You're using a podcast for it and obviously doing it on social media as well. So that's what we teach. It's about the mindset of being an influencer. Then it's about growing your platform and then it's about growing your business, whether it be kind of products online or a service online or a digital um, kind of product or whatever you want to kind of sell online. So that's how you start to grow your business and that's what the program's about. Um, so three kind of facets to it, being an influencer, building your platform and building your business as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm sure I, I believe that the audience you're, you're talking to and serving is, is similar to who would be listening to this podcast. So, uh, you know, it sounds like there's, you're interested in, in connecting with people who are, uh, you wanting to do something more than just make money, right? Serve the world and, and service-based entrepreneurs. Um, so if you are out there and this is resonating with you, hell yes, lifers, um, you know, I will be sure and have links in the show notes for this episode. And um, I'm told, uh, is this right, Stephen? There's I've got an affiliate link here or like, a, uh, no, sorry, a coupon code uh, that um, our listeners can receive uh, a certain amount off the, um, the, the amount of the program. So there'll be more details about that in the show notes. So if you type in hell yes with the link that Norman's going to give you, you'll be able to get a, a $300 discount on that. But you have to type in hell yes. Yes, that's right. Hell yes. All one word. It doesn't matter if it's caps or not, but yeah, all one word, right? Great, great. Um, so yeah, we'll put that in the show notes. Um, okay, I want to back up a little bit here and uh, just ask some, you know, we've gotten into the, you know, it's been great to get into the uh, the, uh, the weeds of some of this uh, Facebook stuff. But now just to pull back a little bit, I'm wondering if you could tell me a little bit about um, a challenge you faced somewhere along the way. So this could be way back at the beginning, like before before you even knew you were going to do any of this, or it could be somewhere along the way. Is there a, a challenge that comes to mind that you'd like to share with us? Yeah, I think the, the biggest challenge was um, keeping on going in the face of adversity. Um, and by that, I mean, when you're not making any money and you're still working a full-time job, you've got a kind of young family and you're, you're doing this 20, 20 hours a week or 30 hours a week part-time and you're not making any money. What what keeps you going? What drives you? And that's kind of the blocks I had because I constantly, well, didn't constantly ask myself and thought, why am I doing this? Why am I spending all this time on this? And I just kept on thinking, okay, there, there must be a bigger purpose here. And, and there was. And there, I've kind of since figured that out. But you've got to keep on going. If you're passionate about it, you love doing it, keep on going, but try and figure out what the purpose is at the end of it. And I didn't really figure that out at the beginning. I didn't really ask myself that question. And that was a kind of big challenge. Why am I doing this? It can't just be because I like it. And I just, I wish I'd asked myself that question. So that was a big challenge for me at the beginning, to be honest, Norman. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Kind, kind of finding, finding that, 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 that reason for, for, going for going forward with this. It sounds yeah, like you, definitely. Did, you did finally yeah, land on it there, yeah, though. Yeah, and uh, yeah, obviously, obviously, it's, it's uh, uh, you're, you're doing great now. So, um, <laughs> yeah. And then what about a uh, what about a big success? I mean, you, you've already mentioned some along the way, but do you remember a day that was like, wow, that first blog post that hit X number of readers or, or whatever it was, a moment where you thought, okay, I think I'm on to something here? Yeah, it was with Facebook. It was that post I was talking about. When oh, it started gosh, yeah. to go viral, when it started to go viral, thinking, wow, that's been shared 10,000 times. And then the next day, wow, it's been shared 50,000 times. And you go, holy shit, this has been shared one and a half million times. And you go, what, <laughs> what's going on? And that was a big, big kind of um, thing for me. That was a big deal for me. And that's when things really started taking off as well. Wow. So it all, that, that was a, um, a, a moment of, uh, ele- of elevation or whatever you want to say when that, that quote, uh, you can only imagine what that, that would be like. So wait a second, a 1.2% of the population of the planet has seen this quote. Um, so, and then what about going, so you you know, it's great talking to people who are so living their helliest lives like you are. You've obviously had so many great results already, but I always like to ask, some people have this, some people don't, but do you ever, do you have a, a big vision? And what I like to call this is your cringeworthy vision, a vision so big that uh, you cringe just thinking about sharing it with people. Um, do you have anything like that, a vi- vision of uh, what you'd like to do going forward? 
Um, going forward, it would be speaking, but that's not kind of cringe worthy. The, the big cringe, <laughs> cringe vision <laughs> um, would be to touch kind of 10 million people's lives. Yeah. It would be to touch 10 million people's lives in whatever way that is. And I don't just mean that they've seen a post or something yeah, yeah. because we've yeah. already kind of reached that stage already. Is yeah. to actually touch and people to say, do you know that guy changed the way I thought I had an aha moment when I heard him on a live show or when I kind of, or I kind of went into his program. I just had a, this big aha moment and teaching 10 million people's lives, not only because I would, uh, because I would kind of help other people because they then can empower a hundred million people and they can go forward and, and empower a billion people um, around the world. So that, I don't know if that's cringe worthy, um, but it's a nice, cringy kind of thought. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it is, it's funny because that was, would be cringe worthy for most people, but for you, I can, well, he's already got 3.5 million people on his Facebook page and 2% of the population see this. So it's like, like oh, I could totally see that happening. Um, uh, but you know, Hey, that's a great, great vision, great vision. And, and again, it kind of comes back to that ripple effect, right? So it's, you know, yeah, that first degree is 10 million. Who knows how many um, once you get a few degrees out. Um, and then what about, gosh, I mean, your whole Facebook page and everything is about um, uh, putting out quotes and inspiration to your uh, readers and listeners. Uh, so I'd be hard pressed maybe to, to ask you to give us one quote or tip or resource, but could, d does any one thing come to mind um, that you could share with our listeners? Um, one quote or resource oh that you put me on a spot there um <laughs> yes what would be the best one one of the best ones i've written um would be oh would it be that one one second i'm just typing it in so i've got it um so i can say exactly here um yes <clears throat> that was it I kind of love this one when I kind of wrote it. It just resonated with me straight away and it just came in a flash of inspiration. It just says, love is a currency of your heart. Spend it on the people who enrich your life instead of people who constantly hurt you. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. I can imagine that one going viral as well. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Well, Stephen, thank you so much for joining us today. Where on the internet uh, can we find you? Well, if you type in Stephen Aitchison into the Facebook search box, you'll find me there to change your thoughts today. Um, StephenAitchison.co.uk is a blog as well. And you're going to have a link for the, the your digital formula program as well. And we've got another couple of blogs as well that we do, blog.yourdigitalformula.com and a kind of couple of other ones. But that's the main ones there, Norman. And thanks for letting me share that, by the way. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, we'll have links to everything that Stephen just mentioned in the show notes uh, so you can connect with, with him. Uh, okay, Stephen, uh, to close things out, I always like to say hell yes together on the count of three. Are you ready to do that? Yes, I am. All right. One, two, three. Hell, hell yes. yes. All right, Stephen. Thanks so much for joining me. Thank you so much for having me on, Norman. Take care, buddy. Thanks for joining me for this episode of the Hell Yes Life podcast. You can subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, or your favorite RSS feed. If you like the show, please leave a rating and review. And if you want to stay connected, visit hellyeslife.com and sign up for the e-newsletter and private Facebook group. Again, I'm Norman Bell. Thanks for joining me. Now let's get out there and live a hell yes life.